I'm Mertz Schaffer from Inside Pulse, and I'm here with Becky Cliff, star of the Animal Planet's Meet the Slots, which debuts on Saturday. Tell me about the show. It's basically a sloth you soap, we like to call it, and it just takes an inside look at the workings of the sloth sanctuary of Costa Rica, um, and it features some rescues, and I mean, all the sloths there have their own little personalities, so you really get to know them. You know, I'm used to seeing reality shows with, like, the drunk guy, the jock, the pretty girl. I didn't really think that you could differentiate between slots, but certainly I saw some personalities coming out. Can you tell that, or am I just crazy? No, that's definitely true. Um, I mean, particularly with the babies, you get some who are really needy, and you get some who really just want to be left alone. Um, and also they form little friendships amongst themselves, so some really don't get on, whereas others bond with each other. Um, and you get rivalries and romances and all these things. It's literally like a little soap opera. So, so it's basically an orphanage for slots, right? So you and your team go out there and you rescue these animals that maybe are motherless or are by themselves. Like, how does that all work? Yeah, we, um, a lot of the times adult sloths will abandon their babies if they're in danger or particularly if the baby's got some kind of deformity. Um, and so we get called out a lot because of babies just found alone on the ground. Um, and also adults can get electrocuted or attacked by dogs or run over. Um, and we get called out day and night to rescue sloths. Um, they're always in need. Over 500 have been rescued by the sanctuary now. Um, and a lot have been returned to the wild, but they also have 141 who permanently live there. So it's getting quite a growing number of sloths. And, and so t how does this work? Like, you just live in this, like, orphanage? Like, are the people that work there your family? Are the sloths your family? Like, I just feel like you're so isolated from everything it's a very strange corner of the world and everything in the sanctuary resolves around sloths um, and it's me and an american family who run the place and they've kind of adopted me into their family um, but there's sloths everywhere you look um, the lady who runs the sanctuary called judy she feeds baby sloths every three hours so she does it at 11 p.m before she goes to bed and first thing in the morning so everything is always focused on the sloths and yeah they're, they're definitely part of the family particularly buttercup and well, what was that? What? Bless you. <laughs> Particularly Buttercup, the queen of the oh, but <laughs> See, the, ac the accent's killing me. Um, so, so then do you get to go home? Do you get to see your family? Or are you like stationed there for like six months at a time? Is it kind of like, you know, war? I tend to do three months in Costa Rica and then a month back in England to see my family. But that gets quite expensive. Um, so I'm starting doing six months and then a month back home. Um, and it does get a little bit like like isolated everyone knows everyone's business and it's very like in the middle of nowhere um but i love it and it's my dream and it's my passion so i love every single day there and and then tell me about like the nightlife you know you're like taking care of these like slots all day you know you're feeding them you're rescuing them but then what do you do for fun like it's the same like family that you're living with like is there a social scene there there's really no social scene and it can get a little bit samey um, um, we tend to just stay at the sanctuary at night. There's a few little villages nearby, but it's, it's so remote and it's third world as well. So um, there's not very much to do, but the sloths are nocturnal. So there's always action at night. They've always got to be on the game. Do you think that there's a misconception with slots? Like everybody always says that they're like the slowest animal, the laziest animal. Like why are they rescuing them? They're just going to sit there and sleep all day anyway. <laughs> they're so misunderstood. And that's exactly what people think. They think they're lazy and stupid and smelly, particularly the local people who think that they're named after the deadly sin. So they're the devil's animal. Um, and so we've got our work cut out trying to educate people that that's not the case. They're careful, they're gentle, and they just want to be left alone to do their thing. They evolved into this slow, careful animal, and that's worked for 64 million years. And that's longer than the dinosaurs, and they lived through the Ice Age. And it's a really successful strategy, and it's only now that humans have come along, we're causing them some problems. You know, uh, I'm always fascinated to find out, like, why people are so passionate about certain things. You know, like, for me, I like, you know, a certain TV show. You know, I can't get enough of, like, Breaking Bad, can't get enough of Hunger Games. It's fascinating to me that you're, like obsessed with slots so how what started this like did you just read like some novel as a child <laughs> i never dreamt of working with slots in fact i never thought that was ever possible um i just i was developing as a biologist i was learning and i knew sloths were they're so strange i mean they're the weirdest animals on this planet by far um and that fascinated me i found them interesting um and then one day my university said hey there's a placement uh, to go and do research in costa rica with sloths and i was like hell yeah so I applied and it went really well. Um, I got the job and I, I, I ended up there. Um, and the, the rest is history. I loved it. It was a dream come true and it went really well. Um, and now I'm living there. So it's 
all going well. So wait, so now you don't go back to England. So now you're just like, you're, are you are you basically part human, part sloth? I think that might be happening. We say that like a researcher becomes more and more like the animal they study. Well, to overcome sloth, you have to become sloth. Well, that, <laughs> that, that, that would mean you'd like fall asleep right now, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm about to. No, gotcha. oh, oh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, I guess uh, the, the other question that I had was in terms of like the sloth testing that you do, I found that you do experiments like in every episode, you know, so is this for personal research? Is it just like an extra thing to do for the show where, all right, all right, bring a roll up Becky here. Let's do another speed test. Let's see how long they sleep. No, um, sloths, as I've said, are really misunderstood and we don't actually know anything about them. So we, for the purpose of the series, went myth busting because we want to change this lazy, slow, stupid image because we know that they're not lazy, slow and stupid. Um, and so we've gone to try and prove that and it's never been proven before. So it is all new science. Um, and we do do a lot of research anyway at the Sloth Sanctuary. And um, it's what we would do on a daily basis. And um, we came some, to some really in interesting results. You know, they call Caesar Milan the dog whisperer. Is Becky Cliff the sloth whisperer? Can you just like see one and say, oh, give him some milk? No, no, he wants to go outside. Like, can you, do you have that ability now? <laughs> That's Judy's job. She's the founder of the sanctuary and she knows the sloths like better than anybody. She like, she's def a definite sloth whisperer. When people tune in, what can they expect? Because I found that the episodes are a little bit different, each one. Yeah, they're all very different. And um, they all feature different storylines, different sloths. Um, and no two days at the sanctuary are ever the same. So we can never know what to expect. But we've got different science stories. We've got sloth rescues. And everyone is full of cute. So prepare the nation because the cute is coming. My, my favorite thing on the entire show <laughs> is like when the female sloth is like ready to mate. What is she? She does this like weird like yell and like no matter when I go out trying to pick up chicks, they like look away. They don't scream like the sloths do. So maybe I should be a sloth. Yeah, they do have a vocalization that sounds quite like a female human screaming. Um, and Buttercup does it best because she puts her arm over her head and grabs her chin when she screams. And we don't know why. We don't know where she got that from. But every time she does it. Um, and that's a way to attract males. So they hear the scream and they know where the female is and they know she's in heat. So they come crawling and swinging and swimming across to see her and it's very successful and, and they can mate through the cage like do they just like come from the jungle like that's what i saw and they had to take like the one of them like out because they didn't want her because she was a bad mother like full-scale drama for sure but like is that what happens do like the slots that are not in the sanctuary come out and like try to mate with the ones that are do you know what that that wasn't even just for the series this genuinely happens on a monthly basis um whenever a female who's captive in the sanctuary comes into heat she draws in all the males from the surrounding jungle. And we've had like seven, eight, nine males all at once just crawling around the sanctuary grounds. We've had them sat in canoes. We've had them climbing the stairs. Um, and you really, you'd literally just stumble across them and you're like, oh. <laughs> and we pick them up and we put them back in the forest because we don't want mating through the cages and things. Um, but it can happen and we try our best to stop it. But yeah, it's very surreal when you stumble on a sloth on your doorstep first thing in the morning. <laughs> uh, why should people watch the show? Well, if they love sloths and they love cute, then they'll definitely love the show. And also it's an education. It's something that people won't have seen before. Maybe they haven't heard about sloths or what the sanctuary does. And I think they'll find it really interesting. And now I, I, I was dying to end it with this. Like I, your accent stood out to me as <laughs> soon as I watched the show. I'm like, oh my gosh, who's the girl with the accent? That's who we want to interview. Um, so obviously it's like, a, it's like an English accent. Can you do your best impression of a Canadian accent? No, I'm really bad at accents. I know, that's why I really want you to do it. <laughs> okay, give me something to say. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, Rob Ford is the best mayor of Toronto. Rob Ford is the best ma ma male or mayor of Toronto. Nobody's no. not, is he? I heard this story no, today. <laughs> um, just end it with an A then. Okay, Rob Ford is the best mayor of Toronto, A. Rob Ford is the best mayor of Toronto, A. Amazing. <laughs> Becky Cliff, meet the slots Saturday on Animal Planet at 8 o'clock. Tune in. In a sleepy corner of Costa Rica, there's a very peculiar sanctuary, home to over 150 orphaned and injured sloths. The masters of Mello are the three-fingered bradipus sloths with their Mona Lisa smiles. Their slightly crankier cousins are the two-fingered coloepus, who look more like a cross between a wookie and a pig. Caring for this dreamy crowd, our formidable nursery manager, Claire. Oh, jeez Louise. Looks like a poo party. Sloth scientist, Becky. <coughs> and 
chief sloth saviour, Judy. I've spent 20 years observing them, living with them, crying over them. Together, they're unraveling the secrets of nature's most enigmatic creature. Life at the world's first sloth sanctuary is a surprising soap opera. A dramatic rescues. Yay! A clandestine romance. And deadly rivals. Ruled over by a pampered princess. It's time to meet the sloths.